guys, Alan from Hack Gadgets here. So I was taking a look on eBay the other day and I saw something that uh, I just had to buy it. I didn't need it. I don't have a use for it. Um, and it was, uh, let me see the price, $3.39. So here it is. There's some writing on the bottom that'll give it away. But uh, So take a look at this and you tell me what you think it is. Well, I'll tell you in a second, but guess what it is. I'll hold... I'll cover up what it says on the bottom here. So there's a bracket. There's some blue plastic. There's something white here. Um, this is actually opaque. So what do you think? And it has three wires coming off of it. Fairly heavy gauge wires. Okay, so this is a photo switch. And... What did I say it was? $3.39 shipped. You know, I'm just wondering what sort of technology they're using in here that would allow them to to produce this and sell this and ship this for that sort of low price. Um, so now that I can see the size of it, and this is rated for, uh, let me see, this is rated for 10 amps. And it is, it's input voltage and... Uh, and output voltage is 12 volts AC or DC. So basically, um, two wires here. Let me see. So here's your power input. And I guess they're using the convention where white is neutral. Um, so white would also be negative. Although it doesn't say here, but I'm assuming white is going to be negative, And this is your positive output. So this is in, in AC mode. This would be your hot in, your neutral. And this would be your hot out. That would be uh, lighting your light. And in DC, I'm assuming this is going to be, your black is going to be positive in. It's kind of opposite convention. Um, this is, white is going to be your uh, negative, And red will be your positive out for your light. So, I'm just curious. I haven't cracked this open yet. It looks like it'll be very easy to take out, or to open up, I should say. There's a, a single screw here. And that screw is uh, it's quite well designed. It actually goes into the mounting bracket here. And, you know, that'll also, since the blue part is between the opaque uh, cover and the mounting bracket, I don't think this, this thing will be sealed. Uh, I think it's just basically uh, held in with one screw. And this is meant to be outside, so this is the mounting orientation. So it would be mounted, uh, you know, onto a wall with a single screw here, actually a uh, a screw and a set screw and there is a small hole in the bottom and so that hole would be uh, it's typically used when uh, when you have something outside um, you would put a small hole in the bottom so that if any moisture happened to get in there it, it can come out uh, so you know a few drops of water or something you're not going to be um, filling this little bucket up here and just submerging your your electronics that's that's pretty common practice um, so I can't see any electronics in here. It's uh, it's too covered. It's too opaque for that. But I'm thinking for that price that there can't be a relay in here. I'm thinking that the relay would be the obvious choice. And, you know, if this thing was only DC, I would say, well, there's probably a, a small, you know, a couple components in there and maybe a MOSFET, you know, to, uh, to handle the switching. But it's AC and DC. You know, if it was, if it was AC, I'd say, well, there's, there's probably a triac in here and and you know that that's handling the switching but how do they do ac and dc uh without using a relay uh there's probably a way with a bunch of components but uh i'm not, I, I can't think of any very inexpensive way off the top of my head so i'm thinking there must be a relay in here um and then how were they actually activating that relay so there's either there must be either a photo uh photo cell or a uh, photoresistor um, or most likely you know a newer device which is a uh, uh, a photo transistor um, and then some sort of maybe an op amp to do a, a comparator circuit and then you know activating must be a relay so let's crack this open and see what sort of technology we have in here for uh, for under four bucks okay here it is let's take that screw out of there brackets and there's no glue 
Well, look at that. I can see a relay already. Okay, so this thing is just jammed in here. There is no no rail. Um, I would have expected to see some ridges all the way down on both sides here so that this circuit board can slot in and, and slide in. Um, so there isn't any of that. Now, I guess, what can it do? It can rattle around here. Uh, but these are fixed to hold things in place. So really, and it can't rattle when those, those wires are held in place. So I guess it's probably okay. A couple of rails would have been nice though. Okay, so here's the actual circuit. So there is a bunch of uh, passive devices and there is a component. So geez, could it be that simple? So we have, we have a photo cell here couple caps, bunch of diodes down there, large resistor, and probably an op amp there, I'm thinking. Let's get in there close and see what that actually is. I was absolutely wrong. If I can get that on camera, that's actually a triple five timer. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I had a quick look at the circuit here. And it uh, seems quite interesting. Uh, it's, it's built as, as cheap as you possibly could. And uh, using that triple five timer is, uh, is, is quite good actually. So here is sort of how it's wired up. Let me get rid of the leads for now. Um, this is actually, um, if we look at it in the uh, in the DC uh, operation, so this would be positive in, which is uh, really hard for me to get used to, but uh, that's that is what it is. And on the opposite side here, uh, there's the relay. So here's your relay, and what we have is here's our relay coils. So when this is energized, uh, and this is obviously a DC coil, so when this is energized, um, this is your common here, and this pin here is your uh, normally open, so this will get shorted out when the relay is activated. And I don't really like the way these wires are connected. You know, they, they could have spent uh, you know no extra money and moved this guy over just a little bit and just tagged the three the three inputs here you know it still would have been a single-sided board um, except instead of just having these these connections just tagged onto the back and uh, and soldered on it would have been you know much much nicer but anyway so here's your your DC input it comes through this 10 ohm resistor and this basically feeds the rest of the circuit um, and here again, you know, probably saved a few pennies here. This is uh, these four diodes. That's a, just a bridge rectifier. Um, you know, it would have been much nicer to see an actual bridge in there, like a single component. But, well, they probably saved a cent and a half, and that's that's the reason for that. Um, so basically, everything feeds through here for the for the circuitry. And the rest of it, you know, this comes over and is tagged onto the. Um, the relay uh, pin here and then the other side of the relay coil or it's not the coil sorry the other side of the uh, the relay contact is over here which all that does is that just gets output on the uh, the red pin so your positive input um, or your AC input is outputted here whenever this relay is activated so here is your your DC uh, negative input and, well, if it is DC, that'll be your negative input, and that just gets fed down, over, and all it does is come over to the bridge. And I've just traced it out, so I've made some markings on here, the positive here and the negative. That's the output of the uh, of the bridge. And let me just hook this up to a, uh, a vise here so we can, uh, we can just measure a few things. Okay, so here we are, we're powered up. Let's just take a look at power. There's 12.02 uh, volts, so 12 volts. It's really uh, hard to get used to the black being being positive. And we've traced this out already. So this is our 
output of our bridge rectifier. And so we have, uh, let's see here, get a good connection. 10.66 volts on there. And so if we figure that out, let's see, 12 minus 10.66. We've got 1.34, divide that by two. So that's uh, a good healthy diode drop. So that looks good. We'll have a small drop on here also on this uh, this input resistor. So we got 40 millivolts on there. And let's just check the operation of this guy. Okay, so I have uh, this sort of precariously uh, hooked up. It's hooked up again to a 12 volt source. And I got two meters hooked up on this. Uh, one meter, uh, this fluke on the right here is measuring across the, uh, the small cap in the circuit, and that's actually just acting as a uh, RC time constant. Um, quite a nice circuit, actually. What that's doing is it's actually providing uh, some hysteresis and, uh, and some time. So if, the, you know, this thing, uh, if it gets a, a flash of light um, at nighttime, let's say, it's not going to activate the, uh, the lights. And all this meter is doing is uh, this is just basically uh, hooked up here uh, to the, the negative coming in. And this red lead from from this meter is uh, just basically hooked up to the the output of this uh, of this guy. So you know the other side of this relay. Um, so if we get 12 volts on here, that means it's activated, and we should see. So this is basically uh, measuring the the ambient light um, through that RC time constant. So if I cover this, and I'll do this carefully so I don't knock these pins off. These are actually just uh, just temporarily clipped on there. So you'll see, see our voltage is increasing. And it went, when it gets to a certain point, we should see it, should hear the relay activate. There we go. And we got our 12 volts on the left. And we tripped, you know, mid six volts. Um, so it was actually quite a bit faster when I uh, when I didn't have this meter on it and they're just tripped back out. Um, I, I, when I was able to, to really cup it hard, and well, we can do that. It actually activates a lot faster. It's just, I think, uh, let's see, one, two, yeah, so about three seconds when it's when it's in total darkness. Um, so just by me cupping it and sort of carefully, gingerly holding my hand over the top, um, enough light was able to seep in there and uh, and affect the uh, the light sensor. So it is actually quite quick. It's about a uh, you know three, four, five second or so activation and deactivation. So it's it's not crazy. Okay, so overall, I am really impressed by what you get for a few dollars. Um, no idea how they made this so cheap. Obviously there's, uh, you know, for an extra dollar worth of, uh, worth of trouble, man, they could have made this extremely nice, you know, by, and this wouldn't have cost any money, but by putting these three terminals, you know, actually, uh, through hole into the board here somewhere and just, you know, brought them across properly, that would have been really nice. Um, you know, having a, an actual, um, a bridge rectifier instead of having these four diodes, that would be nice too. And the only other complaint I have is, uh, is you know, the actual sensor here. Um, you just hope the, uh, the person that makes the board is very consistent as how they place this. Uh, because, you know, depending on how they jam it in there, if it's, you know, facing the wrong way, if it's facing down or something, you'll get some horrible results. And they do have an indication on the, uh, on the board here. Um, right here it says lighting in this direction. And, you know, this board is actually placed in, in like so. 
so that makes sense that you know the sensor would be would be pointing out in the direction that they have the lighting arrow so you know as long as your your sun is over here when you want to uh, uh, detect it um, you're you're good to go but I think with that opaque uh, opaque plastic here um, and we even saw when we were testing it here this this was facing down and this is a, a dark countertop so even facing down um, it was very very easy to, uh, to for it to detect just ambient light in the uh, in the lab here and you know this this cover here will do miles of good to you know bring in any sort of light source and and brighten it up inside there also so um, I think in the, in the wild this device would work really well and I'll take some high resolution pictures of this and post them on the uh, hacked gadgets website um, so if you actually do want to uh, you know fully trace this through uh, and see exactly uh, the, the circuitry um, you'll be able to do so I haven't traced it uh, you know 100% through I just uh, did the basics just to sort of see what it was doing um, but uh, yeah go to hackedgadgets.com if you want to see uh, some full high-resolution pictures of this guy